This is a pretty hardcore origin story. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna figure it out. Were you followed? No, I, d I don't think so. The Spider-Verse is huge and Miles Morales is killing it. His key books are soaring in price and it might be a good idea to start stocking up on other first appearances and key Spider-Verse books before the new characters hit the big screen. But with part two still over a year away, it's anyone's guess what characters will show up on the screen next, or is it? Okay people, let's do this one more time. My name is Ramsey. I'm a comic store owner. I organize conventions. I'm in a band and I'm a lifelong pop culture fan. And I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by it every day of my life. Welcome to Ramsey vs. Comics. I love the Spider-Verse in comic form and Sony Cinematic Animation Masterpiece. You can pretty much guarantee that all the players of the first film will return, but what new characters will we see in Spider-Verse 2? Here's what we know. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a Miles Morales film. He is the protagonist, so expected to revolve around him and his life as Spider-Man. With that said, there is a ton of other Spider characters, and I mean a ton, that can make an appearance. So expect some insurmountable world-ending problem to spill into his universe, and friends old and new to come to his aid. And here are my top 10 picks for who they might be. All right guys, so here's the part where I ask you to subscribe and turn on your notifications and let me know who your picks are and why you think they'll appear in the sequel down below. Number 10. Who said that? Okay, Madam Web. Cassandra Webb was created by the late Denny O'Neill and John Romita Jr. in Amazing Spider-Man 210. She has multiple psychic powers and can see multiple realities, but needs a web-like chair to keep her alive. There is a younger version of her that exists in Miles' dimension in the comics, too. There is also this image right here that some have speculated could hint that Aunt May could be this universe's Madam Web. Anything's possible. This book is already selling for as much as $700 at a 9.8 CGC, but you can still pick up a raw high-grade copy for about 75 bucks. Number 9. Who's saying that? Aranya. Anya Sofia Corazon was created by Fiona Avery and Mark Brooks. She made her first appearance in Amazing Fantasy No. 1 from 2004. She is half Mexican, half Puerto Rican with super strength and enhanced reflexes and a defensive exoskeleton. I can see Sony and the creative team wanting to include more people of color to fit the anyone can wear a mask theme and she could be the perfect candidate. Number 8. Alright, at number 8 we have Silk. Cindy Moon debuted in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, number one, and a full appearance as Silk in issue number four. Created by Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos, Cindy is a Korean American who got bit by the same radioactive spider as Peter. She is faster than Peter and can shoot webs from her fingertips. She has an enhanced spider sense, and there's a version of Silk in Spider-Gwen's dimension. Number seven. Kwaku Anansi, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, has many names, including the Spider God. He was the first Spider-Man and first appeared in Spider-Man Fairy Tales number two. He created something called the Great Web, which gives all spider totems, which is basically every spider person out there, their powers and allows them to traverse realities. Number six. Ezekiel Sims first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man volume two, number 30. He has powers similar to Peter's, but used them to amass a fortune instead of saving people. He found Cindy Moon, Silk, early and trained her how to use her powers, then locked her away to protect her from a big bad dude who feeds on spider-powered people. More on him later. Number five. Spider-Punk debuted in Amazing Spider-Man, volume three, number 10, and was created by Dan Slott and Oliver Copiel. His name is Hobart Brown, a homeless teenager bitten by a spider, irradiated by toxic waste dumping. Thank you, Norman Osborn. So he has a really cool look and a cool origin, and maybe being a musician makes me a bit biased that he'd appear, but he would make a cool addition to the Spider team for sure. Oh, fun fact, he killed Norman Osborn from his dimension by hitting him over the head with his guitar. Number four. Spidey, talk him. Spidey say something. So Billy Morales is the younger sister of Miles Morales. She first appeared in Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 13. There's talk of a time jump in part two, and introducing Billy would be the perfect way to show how much time has gone by. And being that she's part of the Morales family, she has to show up at some point. Number three. 
Takuya Yamashiro and Leo Pardon. So, Takuya is a Japanese Spider-Man that was created when the Japanese company Toei, which you might know from Dragon Ball Z, leased the Spider-Man rights from Marvel for a TV show. And it gets really weird from there. He got his powers from aliens, dons a suit called the Spider Protector, and calls a giant robot called Leopardon whenever he needs help. So Phil Lord, one of the producers of the Spider-Verse, has already said that this character is designed, which makes him likely to appear. Number two. Spider-Zero, also known as Master Weaver, first appeared in Spider-Verse Volume 3, Number 1, and is a trans-dimensional hopper who's jumped around so much that she doesn't consider herself to have a home dimension anymore. Miles does take her under his wing, and it would be nice to see Miles in a mentor role in Part 2, and she could be his protege. Add in the wild speculation that this could be his younger sister Billy from another dimension, and you got a real contender. Number 1. Annie Parker, also known as Anna Mae, is Peter and Mary Jane's daughter. She first appears in Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number one, and I think she has a strong possibility of appearing in the sequel. Why? Because of this. My name is Peter B. Parker. Save the city some more, maybe too much. My marriage got testy, and my wife and I split up. She wanted kids, and, and it scared me. So in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Mary Jane wanted kids, and that was one of the main reasons why they split up. And the ending with Peter at her doorstep holding flowers suggests that they reconcile. Plus, there really is a need to see Peter B. Parker progress from the lonely, fat Spider-Man. What a perfect way to show that he took that leap of faith. Honorable mentions. May Mayday Parker is also the daughter of Peter and Mary Jane in a different universe. So there's a possibility that she may come out too. She has come out in the comics, she had her own series, she took over the mantle of Spider-Man, well, Spider-Woman, so she might appear as well. Spider's Man is made up of a bunch of living spiders, and I just think it would be really cool to see that on the big screen. And maybe these producers are weird enough and crazy enough to show us something weird like that. Spider-Woman is an OG spider person, and she will eventually pop up in the Spider-Verse. Right now, Gwen kind of fills her spot, but with more men than women on the current animated team, she could totally round out the roster. So those are my current picks for the next Spider-Verse movie. Some of these issues are going super cheap, some not so cheap, but it might be a good time to stock up on some and maybe ride the Spider-Verse train all the way to the bank. But Ramsey, what if none of these characters appear in the film and I go and buy all these issues? Well then, you have a bunch of cool issues, most of which are still cover price and worth the read. Actually, in all seriousness, guys, don't go and blow your whole life savings buying every single issue that you think is gonna go up. Only use expendable income when collecting, and always remember, a sure thing isn't always a sure thing. So be careful with your spending, and always do it for the love of comics and collecting, and that way you'll never make a bad decision. The Spider-Verse grows every year in the comics, and there's no telling what twists and turns the producers will throw at us, but expect it to be fun, fresh, emotional, and one hell of a ride. All right, guys, and now on to the giveaway portion of my show, and this is where I give stuff to you guys. And uh, how do you win? Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is one, be subscribed, two, turn off your, no turn on, <laughs> not off, turn on your notifications, please turn them on, and make sure you comment down below. So this time I want you to comment about what you think of this list, and if, did I miss a character? Is there something you know that I don't, maybe? Or if there's a character and why you think they should have been on this list. So if you comment down below, uh, you have a chance to win this Marvel Comics 1000 variant. It's a Venom variant from Unknown Comics. So one person will get this, and the other four people, I always have five winners on the show, will get a Walking Dead number one Kaboom Comics exclusive, that's my comic store, uh, and it'll be sent to you via mail, or if you live around here, you can also pick it up at one of the two locations of Kaboom Comics and Collectibles. Let's see, did anybody even comment? I don't know, we'll see, well, let's find out. All right, guys, so last week we said we were gonna give Batman number 90, the first appearance of the designer to some lucky person who commented down below, and then we're gonna pick four other winners who are gonna win the Kaboom Comics exclusive Walking Dead number one with the Kaboom Comics logo, only 500 printed. Four of you will win this, one of you will win the Batman number 90. So, as usual, I'm going to record my screen, and we're going to pick some winners. So we had 24 comments on this video. We're gonna hit start. And there it goes, names flying everywhere. I see them names flying. And who is the winner? So the winner is Hugh. So Hugh, 
you won this Batman number 90, first appearance of the designer. Make sure you hit me up on my social media links and send me a message so I can send this out to you. All right, so now we're gonna pick four other winners. And so, uh, welcome back, we missed you. Thank you, Hugh, I missed you too, even though I don't know you, but thank you. All right, pick another winner and start. So this is for the Walking Dead number one. We'll pick four more winners. And we got John Cortez again. No way, I won. Yes, you won the G.I. Joe and now you won a Walking Dead number one Kaboom Comics exclusive variant. So cool. All right, so let's pick a third winner now. Hit start again. Man, John, you're in a winning streak. Nerdy Father. Great video, new subber for sure. Keep them coming. Thank you. I will keep them coming if you guys keep watching. If y'all want to see me, I'll do more. When y'all get tired of me, then I'll probably stop. All right, so Nerdy Father is the third winner. Again, a Walking Dead number one Kaboom Comics exclusive variant limited to only 500 in the world. Okay, let's pick winner number four. All right, so Paul Peralta. You have won a Walking Dead number one Kaboom Comics exclusive variant. All right, so pick another winner. This will be the last winner for tonight. And who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Paul just won. Awesome unboxing of Slab Books. Definitely looking forward to the next unboxing. Paul, you already won one. You can't win another one. I thought this was supposed to be um, getting unique winners. So let's pick one more. All right, at some point we will pick a new person unless it was the same 20 people commenting. And the winner is JRiz300 and he said Snake Eyes. So thank you guys so much uh, for commenting. Remember, subscribe, comment down below and the next winner is going to win this Marvel Comics 1000 Venom variant from Unknown Comic Books. So thank you guys, we'll see you soon. All right, I need something from all you guys out there. I want you to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you know when the next What's in the Box is coming at you. Watch out!